Welcome to a very special episode. It's the big 69, folks, just in time for the holiday. It is the biggest 69. That we, it's the only 69 we've ever done, so. Well, speak um, for yourself. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to Craig's Essential Crisis. This is episode 69, uh, end of an era. Everything changes after the day. <laughs> You are really talking this whole change up, and I don't think it's going to be as dramatic as you're building it to be. <laughs> Probably not. That's This is true. Um, if you're listening, you might have been expecting some changes uh, maybe today. I don't know. We were unclear. Or were we? I don't remember. <laughs> that was two weeks ago. But uh, here is the plan. I wanted to, to put a little more effort into having more of a new format. For this episode, we're going to kick it off with episode 70. 69 is going to be a celebration of what I call Craig Cry Classic. Craig's Stumped Crisis. Classic. Uh Kind of like Coca-Cola classic, you know? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have new Coke, which worked out great for Coke, and I think it's going to work out great for us. (laughs) I think what, here's my my prediction, is that every Uh week we're going to say, okay, the real start is next week, because we're really good at that. (laughs) I... (laughs) <laughs> we are good at that, but I did, I experienced some delays on something uh, so that mysterious. is to be revealed later. That is to be revealed okay. later in the okay. episode. Okay. This episode has yeah. it has its own secrets. It's its own celebration. Uh, you don't know, you don't have no idea. Sarah, do you have any idea what's coming? Do you have any idea what's coming? I really, I don't have any idea what's coming. Um, I would like to say that... Uh, it is a special episode for many reasons. It's not only our 69th episode, it's also our holiday right. special because we are in the midst of Hanukkah, Christmas, and Kwanzaa are approaching. And to really ricochet things off, it's also the first episode after our two-year anniversary. Hey! Yeah. So we've been doing this for two years now. Uh, how about that? It would. Our baby could walk on its own if this was our child. <laughs> if this podcast was a child and for me i think it is kind of my substitution for a child i do not have so this podcast is my child uh this might be weird to ask you (laughs) this might be weird to ask you (laughs) do you have baby fever (laughs) is that why you're saying that uh i don't i think not but (laughs) i think when you maybe when you are someone who is of an age where you could be having a baby but don't. Mm-hmm. I do mm-hmm. think things kind of naturally fill that void, whether you mean them to or not. <laughs> like, That's whether wild. it's a pet, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes, sometimes Mishka's my little baby. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Baby boy. Baby but boy. Sweet baby. Sweet baby Mish. Um, and also, this podcast, I think, is a child in that it, it, it keeps me up at all hours of the night. It oh. uh, requires a lot of attention mm-hmm. and nurturing. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes it's just filled with shit. That's rude. <laughs> I think it's true, though. <laughs> sometimes That's... I said, not all the time. That maybe is the rudest thing <laughs> you've ever said to me. That's not true. The rudest thing you ever said, said to me, <laughs> the meanest thing you ever ruder. said to me, is you told me I looked like a minion when I thought I looked really cute one day, and you and, said I looked. And like Sarah, a minion. both. Both things were true. No. I'll have you know, a lot of people find minions to be very cute. No, don't try to placate <laughs> me. That was the meanest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I don't really hold any vendettas or grudges. So I don't really remember the rudest thing you've ever said to me, but I guess. That's because I'm a sweet, sweet baby and I'm so nice to you. Listeners, you be the judge. Um, anyway, I, this is unorthodox, but we're going to do it. Uh, normally we might read something like this at the end of the show. We're going to read it at the beginning. Uh, this is a podcast and we'll explain later how you can leave us a review if you want to do so. And often if you do, I'll say if it's five stars, I'll read it. Uh, we got this one that came in. I'm going to read, I'm going to save the ending of it for the end of the show, but I wanted to start it off, uh, just cause it's relevant to me and uh, maybe I'll explain why. So title can't title, just listen. Five stars. So I may have potentially made a slight error in my last review I tried to leave, but the important part is that the show is great. If you like structured, organized podcasts, 
get out of here because Talon and Sarah are two wonderfully rambling improv comics who usually start the show about 10 minutes into the recording and it is every bit as good as if not better than the actual show. Sorry. And I love that. I couldn't hold back my laughter when it said the show really starts about 10 minutes in, which I know wasn't a burn yeah. because they like it, no. but I thought that was very funny. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, thank you, Asher Thrace. Don't worry. The remainder of uh, what I'll be reading from you is coming later. But I wanted to start with that because I thought it was super funny because here I am like trying to revamp this show a little bit. And one of my first like actions is like... Uh, thinking we should clean up this first part of the show and not do exactly what <laughs> Asher Thrace loves so much. And I think if one person's saying they love it, I hope that means more people love it. Um, if you don't, too late. But my present for Asher Thrace, and I think the rest of the Craigs, is uh, we'll never get rid of this. We'll never get rid of this rambling portion of the show. Maybe... Maybe we'll say the name of the show closer to minute one than minute <laughs> ten, just so people know what they're listening to. Sometimes yeah. it kind of feels like you just turned on the channel in the middle of the day mid-conversation and joined us. So <laughs> I'll try and eliminate that. But uh, yeah, you know what? This part can stay. This part isn't going anywhere. Uh, thank you, Papa Tallinn, for not taking away the fun. <laughs> well, I'm calling. I'm trying to fulfill your baby fever by calling you Papa. Is it working? I don't. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't have it. <laughs> I've watched like two women give birth in the same season of Real Housewives of the Potomac. I'm good. Wait, they like showed the birth? No, 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 no. No, they didn't show like the birth. But okay. I guess that's how it sounded when I what I said. But uh, you know, the process, all of it, the whole arc. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't mean 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 here, but like you don't have to uh-huh. do that work. You know, like. <laughs> Like, I know. I, I know. <laughs> you don't have a womb, is all I'm saying. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I get it. I think I pretty much got a full picture of how how it works. It's all the, yeah, yeah, how it works. You, you basically just uh, you make a few appearances at some galas like, for a month, even if you're pregnant. You have to squeeze mm. into the the dress, and then uh, mm. then the next time we see you on camera, you have a baby, and that's that's a miracle of childbirth. That is beautiful. Thank you for saying that. It's exactly how it happened in the manger on Christmas. Oh. Hey. I know. I wrapped it all back up again. Yeah. Christmas. So that's a thing, right? <laughs> that's happening around tomorrow, if you're listening to this on the day we drop it. Uh, yeah. What do you hope Santa plans? brings to you, Talon, besides the coronavirus vaccine? That's a good vaccine? question. Uh, besides the vaccine... Mm-hmm. What do I want for Christmas? Here is here is something that I'll put out there that it's like, if a friend gave this to me, I'd be like, you did it. You did good. Is it going to be a baby? Are you going to ask for a baby? Uh, <laughs> um, it's going to be a little baby. It's going to be, a, I want a son. Okay. Anyways, I'm sorry. I won't the, stop. The I was going to say son. I'll stop doing that, but I won't. <laughs> no, please don't. I think that's part of it. Uh, Forever. I think weed makes a great gift. And I wish someone would just give me that. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that would be great. That would just be perfect. If, if like a little nicely, like a joint wrapped in, in a little bit of wrapping paper, a little tinsel, just cut it. Ah, mm. that's okay. it. Okay, I we get it, Talon. You do drugs. Number one, we get it. All right. Uh, I want that to be <laughs> the number one thing about me. If that's not clear. And number two, I don't think you should smoke anything wrapped in wrapping paper. Um, <laughs> I don't. There's too many dyes. There's glitters. I don't think it'll be good for your lungs. No, it'll be like a Christmas, like a Christmas puff puff pass, you know? Like a Rudolph the (laughs) Red-Eyed me. That was pretty good, actually. magic Christmas sparkles. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) I don't know. Besides that, the, you know, there's there's a, there's a couple Nintendo Switch games I haven't played, I'm sure. I like a video game. I like mm-hmm. a video game. You're treating this very seriously and as though one of our listeners is going to buy you Sa- something. Santa might be listening. <laughs> and if Santa wa- doesn't have weed, I just want him to know that he can give me video games. Well, if Santa's listening, Santa's a bitch because Santa hasn't fucking left us a review, so... Ooh, Santa. Well, I know you're free on January 
the first. I was, and that's not the day after Christmas, is it? <laughs> no, although it does feel like it. <laughs> what do you? What did you? What do you hope Santa brings you, Sarah? Ooh, um, I would like. What do I want? If I could have like any, is there a price limit? Uh, I'm pretty sure Santa's loaded. Okay. I think if I could have anything right now, I'd want a private jet. <laughs> oh, you know what? Shit. I take that back. I don't want a private jet. People die all the time on private jets. Commercial all the way. <laughs> They're much safer. I take it back. I don't want a jet. So you want, want like just like a that. plane ticket then or like a commercial airline of your own? Or? Um, maybe like a, uh, there's no, I don't know. Like maybe like an island, like if I could get an island, but like. There's, like, a lot of ethics involved with that. Like, I wouldn't want it to be stolen from a native people's. Um, essentially, I would, well, like, well, Santa. Feel... Sorry, what? <laughs> well, just, I'm just imagining, you're right. Getting around those ethics is tricky, and I don't know how mm-hmm. many islands there are out there that are unclaimed. Yeah. That were big enough to, you know, uh, hold, stabilize a house or something. So, what if, uh, what, if, what if it was a man-made island, you know, generated in a, in a spot, easy to get to, nice weather... The sand is like, you know, uh, plastic from water bottles. So it's recycled. I don't know. <laughs> but then we get into the ethics of like, yeah, what's the ecological impact of building a man-made island? I just, right, 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 you know, right, right, now right, I'm right. getting into it. My anxiety is really telling me not to wish for anything because I'll regret what I wish for. It's like a monkey's paw situation. I don't want to. <laughs> Santa, if you're listening, yeah. I don't want anything. Please don't ruin my life. <laughs> uh, I think you're thinking of Krampus mostly who does Mm. that kind of i hope santa's not just some trickster if you wish for something with the wrong words he'll be like okay i'll get you that green you want and then he turns me green Mm. classic because for some reason i whispered i want green into his ear instead (laughs) of i want weed because i didn't want to like i didn't want him to tell my mom my mom uh, I think also green generally refers to money, so he might give you money instead of weed, which you can then hey. use to barter for goods and hey. services such as marijuana. There you go. Boom. Hey, Roasted. it's it's been about 10 minutes. I think Asher Thrace would be happy with the amount of um, jiving. What is that word? The amount of jiving we've done. <laughs> Vamping? I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, but let's start the show. and Let's, okay. let's not try it. Yeah. This one's for you, Asher Thrace. You caught my eye in the grocery line And I fancy myself a man worth your time And I couldn't help thinking I wish you Podcast for listeners, stuff my stocking. It's time for another Craig's Essential Crisis, the show where we take the misconnection section into new directions. I'm Talon Bigler. I'm Sarah Thompson, and you almost just said sections. I tried to get over it, but you know what? I should have known because I do the same to you anytime you slip up just a little bit. Yep. It's how we yep. maintain our friendship. It's, you know, when people say they like push each other to be the best that they can, like this, that's us doing this. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, uh, you know, keeping us, you know, humble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So let's not even talk about it anymore. (laughs) Okay, we're moving on. (laughs) I made one mistake, and it was, you know what? I don't think anyone else noticed, so let's move on. Okay. (laughs) Great. Good, 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 good start. Good, 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 good. Well, Uh, this is how the holidays are for me, anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Just, I know, we're all feeling testy, it's the holidays, it's a time of correction oh. and punishment, so. Yeah, exactly what uh, what that what that Jesus was saying and talking about all those times. So if you haven't listened to the show before, what we like to do is take misconnections from Craigslist, America's favorite list, and uh, we will cherry pick them for each other, send them to each other to cold read on the spot 
for you right here, right now. Uh, who should who should start? Do you think uh, should it be me? Should it be you? What do you what do you got? You go ahead. You go ahead. I'll start. Okay. Okay. Well, bottom <laughs> up. Terror reader named Soup. Over the summer, I had a wonderful reading from Soup in East Portland. You still in town? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I just I'm thought not... we'd start off uh, short and savory. <laughs> Let's do. You know, I had Soup for dinner, and uh, he was delightful. Oh. <laughs> no, but really, I did have Soup. It was good. A name like Soup. What do we think? Uh, what do we think of that name? Do we think, think it's, it's a real name? I think it's somebody um, who's either invented a new self. Uh, or is trying to outrun their past. <laughs> Wait, you invent you you get a chance to start fresh, and soup is what you land on. You think? Well, because nobody feels threatened by a soup. You know what I'm saying? Like if you were like if somebody was like soups after you, you'd be like ah what soups on? <laughs> but soup is so non-threatening. <laughs> like I here's the fantasy I've elabor- I've made in my head. Okay, uh, is that Go soup on. soup used to work for the mob as a hitman? But then okay. uh, they got caught in a bad in a bad job. They got taken in. They made a deal to get out of jail, and that meant turning in their mob old mob boss. Uh, and so they had to enter a new phase of their life, turn over a new leaf. And they chose the name Soup because it's so innocuous. Nobody would ever think that somebody named Soup had once been a hitman. This is uh, is this John Wick Five? Is that? <laughs> yeah, what? I've definitely seen those. So John Wick changes his name to Soup. <laughs> Hilarity ensues. I, I like the idea of this being a John Wick like spin-off comedy. That's like, what if we just did John Wick but hilarious? Does John Wick also um, do tarot? Is that where this ties in? Uh, I mean, that's more of a fanfic that I wrote, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Fanfic can be can be uh, can be acknowledged as canon sometimes. It happens. Oh, absolutely. It does happen. Think of, you know, Sherlock. That's one example. I don't that's think one. of Sherlock. I try not to think of Sherlock. <laughs> Ooh. Hot Ooh. take. Hot take. Hot take. Don't, don't know what else is hot? Soup. <laughs> so, yeah, soup is, I'm, I mean, I'm just so, if I had went to go get a terror reading, and if the reader sat down and said, hi, my name is Soup. Let's begin your reading. I would not remember a single thing about the reading. <laughs> not, all I would be thinking about is, how do, you la- how, do you get, how do you get called Soup? How do you land on that name? How do you... Did, is this, if this isn't a biblical name or something, then okay. So someone chose this? No, they chose it. Why would you choose Soup? That would be me in my brain for the next half hour. And then I'd walk out of there, pay the person, and... Not not know what they said. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a genius racket to me. Because then you've got to go back again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because, you know, do you think you just get the same reading twice, though? I mean, that never happens. No. Have you ever had your cards read? Uh, n- 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 I mean, you and I, we did like an improv show that had some tarot reading in it. And I think that was probably mm. the most experience I had with that. Okay. Yeah, um, I... Um, and- Oh no! Please continue. <laughs> well, just that I think I, I think I would inadvertently learn to read my own, but I never like had mine read. Okay, yeah, they. I've never had mine professionally read, but um, a friend of mine did buy me a deck, which is apparently what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to buy your own first deck. So a friend of mine right. was visiting Portland, and he bought me my first deck, and then. I've been doing readings for myself, and I also did some um, readings for my friends recently, which has been really fun. Um, nice. Yeah, that's all I had to say about it. I'm not going to reveal I mean, anything I read because it's private, but it's uh, personal. Sure, sure, sure. But I mean, like, you'll have to read mine, right? I mean, yeah, we could do we could do it's... a special episode where I read your um, cards, and then you're like, "This is too personal. We can never release it." And I'll be like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, maybe our next 420 show. I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> when the walls come down." I don't know that I could read them while stoned. It's it does take a little bit of brain power. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try though. I mean, all right. That well, that thing. was that may be the first time I've ever heard that phrase said earnestly. I'd like to see you try. I'd like to see you try. You know what? I say a lot of phrases earnestly that don't get said the way like, you know, 
here's what I'll say about you right now. Us, you and I, we're not so mm-hmm. different. I think that's just genuinely true. Wait, I know do a lot people, of people might say that? And they might sound like a scary, but like a bad guy or something. But I'm telling it to you as a friend. We're not so different, you and I. <laughs> I didn't know people said that non honestly. I'm. Con- <laughs> I now mean, I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back to all the times people said that to me, and I'm just wondering. <laughs> Were they saying if that they were by any chance, if they were wearing an eye patch, or if mm. they had like some weird, like metal teeth, or mm. just some weird facial scarring, they might have been a Bond villain. So oh, shoot, just captured again watch by your... a Bond villain. Anyway, Soup, if you're out there, um, I would definitely take a tarot reading from a person named Soup. You know, I would absolutely, I would, but I would need to come back that second time. <laughs> You, and maybe you have a second helping of soup. Crouton. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You're welcome. So, All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for bringing soup, the, the tarot reader, into our lives. I think we could all. That's the next big holiday, you know, character, I think. You know, soup stay the ta- tuned. The tarot reader. Soup, the tarot reader, saves Christmas. Oh, heartwarming. Well, um, I have a, a food related one that you sent to me that I can tell just by the. Um, title, so I'll go ahead and read it. <laughs> go for it. Taco Bell, beautiful gal. I stepped on the wrong pedal. You were working the drive through and seemed to be cold. I think you're gorgeous, and thank you for not judging me. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Excellent read. Think- <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I worked very hard on it. Um, do we think this was a uh, accidentally hit the gas when they meant the brake, or an accidentally hit the brake when they meant the gas? Mm, good question. I would think, I I would think they hit the gas when they meant to break. I think either they were like pulling up to the window, and then instead of slowing to a stop, they like jolted forward a couple feet too far or something. We've uh, all been there. We've all done that. We've all watched YouTube videos of cars crashing through the front of stores, right? I watch compilations like that all the time. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a, uh, I've seen a couple independently. I don't know that I've watched a whole compilation. <laughs> I've been spending so a I'm lot glad. of time on YouTube recently. That's been like kind of the the next. I was just discussing this. I don't know if I've said this already on this podcast. On this podcast, um, say it. But uh, I feel like quarantine could really be organized into like phases of obsession, or like absolutely. Things that you less than obsession, like things that you try to use to distract yourself from the your circumstances, um, and I think that I'm pretty deep. I think that I'm starting to come out of it, but I'm pretty deep in the YouTube, watching YouTube on my TV with my roommate phase <laughs> right now. Nice. Um, it's a and good one phase. of my least. It's a good phase. It's it, at least it involves interaction with another human. I would say my least favorite video that that she really likes is the compilation of people almost mm. falling off of things, and it's only two and a half minutes long, but it's the <laughs> the most stressful two and a half minutes of my life. <laughs> oh my god! Almost falling off of things is worse than I think if it was just people yeah. falling off of things. Yeah, you don't get any uh, of the. It might not sound worse, but it's worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, at least you get some release when they fall and you're like, oh, they're okay. But this one is like, if they'd fallen off of that, this would not be on YouTube because it would be a snuff film. Right. I mean, it would be in a different subreddit for sure. Oh, no. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Uh, I bet. I, there is a subreddit, though, I do. I did follow until I stopped. It was uh, Idiots in Cars, which is kind of what you're describing. It's similar. It, it's just... People, it's like all dash cam footage of people getting Mm. into pretty stupid little accidents. Mm. Um, I don't think it's anything fatal because, again, I think that would have to go somewhere else. But (laughs) yeah, still scary at times. But a lot of it is like, here's someone trying to run someone off the road because they're trying to get in a lane, and then they do. You know, some of it is like a little bit of Schadenfreude because someone's being an idiot, and then they. (laughs) <laughs> wreck their car <laughs> um I, yeah but they're okay i'm sure otherwise otherwise they couldn't put it on the internet right? right 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 it's like when you watch someone you know die or get really hurt in a reality show and you're like no they didn't they could because have. they couldn't because i just i wouldn't be allowed to watch yeah exactly i do have to say though um just a quick we can move on in a second but i just have to say 
The Challenge is out on Netflix, and I don't know if anyone knows what The Challenge is. The Challenge is when they took all of the reality stars from the real world and road rules from MTV and then got them really drunk and put them in a villa, usually in Mexico, and then they would do like Ooh. physical challenges a la Fear Factor. <sighs> um, oh, my God. One of my main childhood uh, TV shows, uh, and it's on Netflix. It's fucking wild. Like, I will say it a million times. Early 2000s reality television had no conscience. They didn't give a <laughs> fuck about anyone on that show. People have gotten into physical, like if you watch TV now, like reality TV now, if anyone like pushes anyone else, like they get kicked off immediately. Like they can only drink so much alcohol in these shows. Like things are very different now. And in the early 2000s, they just gave them as much alcohol as they wanted. People are getting in physical fights and punching each other in the face and making each other bleed. And nobody does anything. It's <laughs> insane. Yikes. Okay. Anyways, watch the well, challenge on uh, Netflix. <laughs> I think I might have to. I might. You have will, to and that. then we can talk about it. They're only twenty minute episodes, so it's like a good little, a good little. <clears throat> it's like Perf. doing a line of coke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'll check that out. Um, <laughs> anywho, here's another. So I'm gonna take a, a different. Like we just sidestepped one way. I'm gonna sidestep the other Great. way. We'll Michael get to Waltz. this Taco Bell girl. Yes. Do you have like a YouTube video that just like? <laughs> Kind of lives in your head rent free. Like, what is the one, the oh, one video that? What is it? Well, they they do come they do come in uh, waves. The one that's currently stuck okay. in my head is the Didi Mega Doo one. Have you seen that one? <laughs> oh, it sounds familiar. Remind me. It's a news anchor. It's really kind of fucked up, but it's so uh -oh. unbelievably funny. It's a news anchor, and she's talking about um, uh, somebody who died on the job. I think it was a police officer. Uh, and she's trying to say her name, <laughs> and she calls her Dee Dee Mega Doo Doo, <laughs> even though that is not her name at all. <laughs> um, and it's incredible. Okay. It's incredible. It's an incredible video. Good. Okay. I'll, what I'll is yours? <laughs> That's a good question. I think, like you, I think it also kind of depends on the time of year. Sure. But uh, I think right now. Well, one that always kind of lives rent free in my head is the like too many cooks video, the mm, mm. Adult Swim mm. project. Which uh, have you you uh, are you familiar? Yeah, yeah, I I know what you're talking good, about. Good, I think good, good. somebody forcibly showed it to me at a party we were at once, and I was very angry because I don't like to watch video. That's like my number one rule is I don't like to watch videos in social situations. So fair. Are you uh are you certain that person wasn't me? I think it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to share. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. thought it could be. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, if you haven't, it's a great 15 minutes. I think the wildest aspect of it, like it just aired on Adult Swim in the middle of the night. No warning. <laughs> Nothing. No context. <laughs> and it's just 15 minutes of just kind of uh, mind-melting insanity just you you just it keeps changing the rules and you just are just trying to figure out what you're watching for 15 minutes and I, it's pretty great it's pretty great I, another good classic is uh the brody quest video by neil c Sariga, who also made ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny i think i like created content i was about to say apparently. i was literally about to say i think this is like our alignment on those charts you know those D, &D charts right right like i think that yeah. you are like like lawful neutral and i'm like chaotic <laughs> evil like in terms of what we like <laughs> and also who we are as people i, I <laughs> might say lawful evil is where You'd say lawful evil. because We're both in the evil column i'd say lawful okay evil. okay i'll take it <laughs> yeah only because something like a Too Many Cooks, trying to make other people watch it, is a form of torture. Evil. Yeah, it uh, is evil. Because I was going to say, and my I am second the favorite, you are the, yes, you are the person at the party. Yeah. I wasn't going to drag you, but yeah, it was you. Um, <laughs> I will say that my second favorite video is a man, like, I don't like curated content at all. Uh, I prefer mm -hmm. just raw chaos in its form, original form. Because um, my other favorite video fire. is the one where a man is watching a bear try to cross a river and it falls in and he screams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. This, I okay, know that we one. should move on from this segment because I'm sure there's nothing people like more than hearing us describe YouTube videos we like. 
I, you're right. But I do think I pose that question to everyone. Let us know. Let us Let know. Let us know. Let us know. Uh, we'll put a little comment box up on Instagram later. Let us know what your go-to, like, your the YouTube video in your head at the moment is right now. And uh, thanks for playing along. Let's move on <laughs> to Taco Bell Beautiful Girl. Gal, sorry. Just real quick. Like... Thank you for not judging me. I mean, she's working. She's probably judging you. She's absolutely <laughs> judging him. Yeah. Yeah. She's got nothing else to do but stare at this drive through window at all the people coming who want their cheesy gordita crunches. And yeah, she's judging you. I'm sorry. She's judging you. It's not that she means any harm, but she is judging you because it's entertaining. There's nothing else to do. She's judging you. She's judging you. I also thought that when it said... Um, I mean, it's been so long since we read it. Our listeners might want remember, but there's a line that says, uh, you were working the drive through and seemed to be cold. I thought originally that meant emotionally cold, um, but I'm Ooh. now realizing that it is winter in Portland, so it's probably physically this cold. This is true. <laughs> we are reading these in real time as they are posted at the same time as you are listening, and uh, it's cold. It's cold. Anyways, it's cold. that was the, the anyway. majority of my thought on this one. <laughs> Thank you for that. I think we we squeezed out a a lot of, on that one. A lot of juice. All right, your turn. Your turn. Grapefruits back to you. Here we go. Peace Health Southwest Med Center, Vancouver, to the awesome Asian nurse that helped me recover from my pneumonia. I would love to see you finish our conversations. Sorry about fighting with you when I was delirious. Okay, so first thought. Uh, pneumonia, when you're not expecting it, hard to cold read. <laughs> yeah, word. I heard you struggle, but you did good. I am sure I made a P sound. Go back. Look at the tape. But uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> really, it's on the like second line, too. Like I really didn't see it coming. And whoa, whoa. <laughs> I just whoa. am trying to keep uh, you on your toes, pneumonia. Talon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, I appreciate it. Uh, I... I would love to see you, comma, finish our conversations. Yeah, I read that weird because of the comma. Again, this person. Yeah. You had a hard time I blame with this them. one. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry about fighting with you when I was delirious. So do you think he's got a shot? Um, I think he, you know, I, I think maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think maybe. I, they did fight, though. I don't like that. But I, I think the reason this one caught my eye really... Is because I was wondering, like, how many, like, how many love stories are going to come out of this, <laughs> this pandemic, like this, right. like being nursed back to health, like you know, like World War Two, like that's its whole own um, genre, <laughs> where like, right, like soldiers get nursed back to health and then marry their nurses. Am I wrong here? <laughs> you no, know, you're not wrong. But I think what you're making <laughs> me think about for the first time is, I guess I've never thought of all those stories existing. <laughs> like the, in the same universe, but they do. You know what they, I mean? This is but all they absolutely part- <laughs> do. Yeah, when you think about it, uh huh. The 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 like emergency room in World War II is just like the bar now. Yeah, and it's it's like um, it was like the alternative, like you know how like there's a whole thing of like go to college to meet a man so that you don't actually have to graduate and then like you can leave. It's similar, like go get a nursing degree. Go nurse someone to hell so that you can meet a man and quit your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I agree. So, huh, now this is a way to do it. I think we've been struggling <laughs> to come up with COVID-19 based material entertainment wise. You know, there was a movie that just came out and mm-hmm. no one liked it. It was very bad. Mm. Uh, there's some comedy things that came out on like various streaming service, but I didn't hear about any of them really. We're not getting it. I think this is how you do it. I think you have to make a COVID movie like a World War II epic. Yes. And it has to be based yes. in a hospital. Gray wash on the film. Yes. Tom Hanks is in it and probably directed it, I'm going to say. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. If not him, I'm going to say Ron Howard. One or the other. We love to see it. Is Ron Howard directed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is... Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sold on this premise now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Uh, you Thank know, you. What's a good deadline for you? To Monday? Monday. To Monday is great. <laughs> to Monday it is. Uh, yeah. I didn't that have much to say on that one. That was just... 
that was my main thought was like, I can't wait for all the, the COVID love stories. Yeah. I mean, I almost want to place a wager. Do we think it'll be more <laughs> love or heartbreak in COVID time? Like, <laughs> I think definitely more heartbreak in the real world, more love in the fake world. The way we'll choose to remember it is that it was a time where we were all boning, even though none of us are. <laughs> none of us. Nobody. If none you of are, us are, you're canceled. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, if you are, you're killing it, but canceled is also fine. <laughs> You are killing it. You're killing other people because you're exposing them to the virus. All right. Ooh, damn. Hot All right. Takes. Moving Hot takes. on. Moving on. Okay. I've got your next one here. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Pacific pride darting eyes. No, no. It was clearly some kind of mirage, a black-haired, tomboyish Vactor truck operator in high viz getting fuel. No, can't be. I have to be imagining it because this gorgeous creature looked at me in my small flatbed truck, me, dressed in black work clothes with mud on them. But wait, I think she did look at me again. I'm softly singing, keep on loving you, which is playing on my earbuds. Good thing that incredible being across from me is a statistical impossibility because I wasn't expecting to develop a crush while getting fuel here. Can't be. I really should wake up. No, I did not go to Juilliard, for everyone asking. No, I did not. Please stop with the claps. Please. Please. Oh, you're making me blush. Please. <laughs> Good work. Tell me why this attracted you, Talon. <laughs> oh. No reason. We can move on. Um, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, the language in here is quite uh, flowery. I feel like they really took us on a journey. They mm -hmm. could have just written, like, uh, you know, per, what's it? Black haired tomboy getting fuel at mm -hmm. Wilsonville. Hey, hit me up. I'd want a bone. But no, they gave us like the um, the the pace at which they revealed information, mm -hmm. the detail that they gave us, the the putting us in, not like directly in their shoes. This isn't just a message on a cork board. That you look at and it's from someone to someone, you know, black and white. This was, this was an experience. I would agree with that. I think that's a great way of putting it. It was an experience. I didn't know what was happening, but I felt all of it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I definitely think that they, they, they have a voice. Uh, as we've said, not everyone on the here has a voice. This person has a tone of voice. You would pick this person out of a crowd. Um, and uh, I love that there aren't Vactor trucks the poop suckers. Isn't that what a Vactor truck is? <laughs> I mean, I believe you. I don't know. I think I don't... That's what that is. And I love that that, you know, those kinds of jobs don't get it romanticized enough. So I think that good job to the writer this. Yeah. Yeah. Nicholas Sparks. Where's the romance novel starring Ryan Gosling as a Vactor truck operator? That's right. Your In sewage is backed Oregon. up. You bet. You bet. <laughs> we got to move on before I try and waste too much time trying to think Please. of Please. Yeah, whole it's movie. fine. You don't need a tagline. It's fine. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I know I don't. I know I don't. Ah, you've done it. I'm going to be up again. I'm going to be up <laughs> all night thinking about this. Well, when in Rome. I will move on to this next one that you have provided for me. I keep crawling back to you, downtown. With dirty hands and worn-out knees, I thought I'd seen the last of him. But I'd shake my head and let you in. Most things I worry about never happen anyway. I hate that I want to crawl back to you, like a dog to its vomit. Okay, Mishka has excellent timing. Um, because Mishka uh, barked during the one dog-related misconnection I found. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And you know what? It hasn't barked in months. So that's weird. <laughs> um, I think, I, well, I know I picked this one because um, that last line really threw me for a loop. Do you mind reading it again? <laughs> yeah. I hate that I want to crawl back to you like a dog to its vomit. Okay. As a dog owner, can I ask you, does Mishka crawl to his vomit? 
I <laughs> have witnessed mm-hmm. similar events take place. <laughs> I, that's so tactful. I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like dogs do kind of have this thing whenever they they vom and they they kind of don't know that it came out of them. So they're just like, oh, what's this? <laughs> that's, that's always how it seems to me. <laughs> that's like a real inside look into a dog's psyche. Thank you for looking that deep. Yeah. You know, I think as best as I can figure out, that must be what's happening. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, so I think a lot of dog owners do kind of have to, like, if their dog gets sick, like, they kind of have to stop their dog from ingesting it. From but, crawling back um, to their own vomit like a person in love with somebody else on Craigslist. Now, take what I just said as you will, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this is a person referring to being the dog in this metaphor, but I feel like the dog is thinking a different thing when it's crawling back to its vomit than a person would be, <laughs> you know... Also crawling back to their vomit. If you're like a dog yeah. to its vomit. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, if that is the metaphor, it's like, okay, I uh, you're the person who... Is going back to this thing that really deep down is shitty, but they don't know it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that I works. get that. <laughs> it does. You know, the metaphor isn't perfect, but it works. Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, work on try out some new metaphors. Maybe if you're gonna throw vomit in there, maybe sprinkle it throughout, just because it was kind of a. Uh, <laughs> you know, hard left turn. It's, you know, again, yes. it's a word on its own line. You're not expecting to read it. And then you're just like, whoa, here really it is. Really pulled a real pneumonia there. Right. And if it's, if you're trying to, I don't think you're trying to really like gain this person's approval or anything. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like a love note because vomit is definitely a word you would avoid if, it was, <laughs> if this were a note of love. Speak for yourself, but yes. Okay. I will. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, is if the intent here is to recognize that you are following a pattern you don't like, then I think well done. Well done. We applaud you. Thank you. All right. I've got another one from you. Oh, well, why don't you give that a read? Female subway employee, Southeast Portland. I've only been able to tip you $20 because I generally don't carry enough cash around, but you always seem like you're a bit overworked and it seems like it really helped you out. I'd be willing to increase the size of the tip, but I don't stop in often. What is going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, this is like, this feels like the, this feels like the Craigslist misconnection version of those videos where YouTube influencers go out and like record themselves giving $20 to homeless people and then being like, let's see what they do with it. And then when the homeless people like buy food for their friends, the YouTuber is like, you proved you deserve to live a life with dignity and give them like a hundred dollars like that's what this this connection feels like the the craigslist version of <laughs> uh yeah absolutely it's a little wild it kind of like keeps that whole first i mean is this all i mean yeah most it's all of one it's paragraph one yeah it's all like one long chunk yeah it's like one big chunk and then a, a, nor- a pretty regular size sentence but we're not to Get into the you know mechanics of semantics, sentence yeah. length exactly <laughs> the mechanics of the semantics. But uh, I mean, would it be semantics? I mean, it would be semantics if it was talking about Tell what it. words mean. <laughs> Tell it. Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, that first sentence really, I kept not understanding. I thought I had it, and then it got away from me. Like I've only, I've only been able to tip you twenty dollars. That's a pretty big tip, it's a good is tip. what I'm thinking. Like, it's a big that's tip. pretty good. Unless you're, I don't know what, well, it's Subway. So it, that's a pretty decent tip. Yeah, unless because you're ordering $200 carry... worth of sandwiches, then it's a bad right. tip. Then it's a bad tip. Uh, I've only been able to tip you $20 because I generally don't carry enough cash around. Okay. Okay. So you, so like 20s are just like the smallest thing you carry <laughs> then? Okay. But you always seem like you're a bit overworked and it seemed like it really helped you out. So. I mean, I, you could almost, I almost thought this was going to end up f- like some sort of flirtation or some sort of, uh, you know, come on. Like, I uh, I tip you $20 a lot, but I, I could give you a different kind of tip, if you know what I mean. No. Like, 
Well, see, that's what I thought this was going to be. But it really, this is like a person who's just like, I'm very rich. And I'm sorry that I don't tip you more than your, I'm, I'm going to say, 400% tip. Uh, but I just don't stop by enough. And I don't carry more cash. <laughs> I, it's very, I don't know what. <laughs> that, that's what I think they're trying to say. And it's weird. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's exactly what they're trying to say. They're doing a humble brag about how rich they are and how the smallest money they carry is $20. Here's my advice to them. You know, stop relying on the money to do the talking for you. All right? Yeah. And I, but I do have to commend them also for not making any gross footlong jokes or any gross tip jokes. So they do have right. they do have a couple points in the pe- in the piggy bank, the emotional piggy bank. This is true. I mean, th- this had every opportunity to go blue, and it didn't. It did. Uh, so, yeah, it was just kind of bewildering. I just can't. I, just, I can't imagine being that subway employee and someone giving me like a twenty dollar bill and then saying like, "Ah, I'm sorry, this is this is all I got." <laughs> it's like, uh, it's fine. Uh, thanks. Like, what's? I wish someone would drop an outrageous <laughs> tip on me someday. That's the dream. You want you want the tip sexually. from someone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've never fantasized about being a Subway employee before, but I'm doing it now. That's embarrassing. Um, hey, I have one for you. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I it might look familiar. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Do you ever think of me? I still wear your Coheed and Cambrian sweatshirt all the time. The one that when we broke up, I swear I didn't have. I still have our matching tattoo, a little ghost to haunt me about the boy I fell in love with all at once. Our love was so romantic, they could have made a movie about it. But love like that is often short-lived. It's been four years, and I miss your messy brown hair and how quirky you were with only one kidney. I guess, I just wonder these days, do you ever think of me? <laughs> I. So, yes. So, yes. I just read the title one. of the next one you'd sent me <laughs> and noticed that we had sent each other this one because what a gem it is. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, I mean, can there's a lot just, to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Can I just, can we just like at the same time, we'll count down and we'll say one word that uh, was the word that made us pick this out of the bunch. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. So like sum, like pick a word, sum it up. Like this is the reason why you picked this misconnection. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'll count Go down. Count it down from three, and then after one, we'll say it. <laughs> okay, great. Great. Three, two, one. Kidney. Kidney. Yes. Ah! <laughs> it was the same one. That line. <laughs> It's just, it's all pretty <laughs> tame until that word. It, it, it could have been anything. You're so quirky with ah. your one kidney. I don't think quirky is the have, right word. <laughs> ah, you got one kidney? You're just like Zoe Deschanel. Oh, my God. We're going to have such a 500 days of summer moment because you only have one kidney? Oh, my God. How fun. I'm just really into quirky <laughs> girls, you know. Uh, plays ukulele, kind of t- one kidney. It's just, um, just kind of my type. It's just kind of quirky. Kind of quirky. <laughs> Wild. Yeah, it's just such a, and and like it feels like such a choice because mm-hmm. you know they're a decent writer. Maybe they don't have the best adjectives. You know, our love was yeah. so romantic. Is like a, it's fine, but. What they were saying was there was more to that sentence, you know? So it all made sense. Quirky is like, it feels like they know other words. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like there could have been a million other words to describe that. And quirky is the one they felt was right. And they understand what the word means, I'm pretty sure. Unless they just don't. And they've been going through life thinking it means something totally different. I want them to keep living in that delusion because I'm I like I'm hoping that like they go to visit their grandma in the hospital after she falls and breaks her hip and they're like grandma you're so quirky (laughs) (laughs) uh sorry I'm late I had to uh had to help my quirky grandma with her (laughs) medicine for her quirk quirky Uh. broken hip (laughs) 
Yeah, it's um, it's pretty quirky. You know, it's pretty you quirky. Know. It's pretty quirky to have one kidney. That's true. <laughs> uh. Anyways, I did love right, that. Right. Um, God bless that person truly for taking such a bold stance. I loved it. Yeah, honestly, this was a <laughs> delight to read. Um, I like the line about the little ghost tattoo that's haunting you. It's like, wow, I felt that. Ooh. I have like, matching tattoos with like several people. Um, and I also, I often wonder like what would happen if something catastrophic happened and like we, I regretted getting that tattoo, but on their own, they're both good tattoos. So I don't feel like I would regret them ever. <laughs> I mean, that's what it needs to be, right? If you're going to get matching yeah. something, it, it, it's got to work on its own. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know about you. I uh, I just I have a hard time with people who are like glued to each other at the hip. And if that's the only way I can enjoy your matching tattoo, then get the fuck out. <laughs> I, uh, I feel very much the opposite. I feel like all of my close friendships are very intense. <laughs> And well, there's a difference between an intense friendship <laughs> and like never seeing a person without the other ever, okay, yeah. ever. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think if I went like, through a lot of my early. I think like up until probably college, like that was very much like who I was, and even in some of college, like there were people that were always associated with me, or I was associated with them. You know. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, association, fine. I've known people who like literally it's like a, a pair that they would just like always that's who it was that mm-hmm. was the two people walking into the room at any moment and it was also clear that like one of them kind of had more of the personality that like carried <laughs> both of them and it was kind of like the second person was feeding off them like some mm-hmm. sort of some sort of nocturnal fish <laughs> like <laughs> i knew i was like literally imagining those fish that suck onto sharks as you said that so yeah, thank you. a sucker fish if you will if you will a uh, sucker if fish i hardly even know her anyways um <laughs> you're welcome uh, for that. uh thank you for this <laughs> um yeah i think that uh, this one had a lot to get into and I think that I agree with them like the way they describe their relationship I very much could see this as a movie um, messy brown hair the the tat- matching tattoos the Coheed and Cambria right. we won't even get into that I don't even want to touch that with a 10 foot pole but <laughs> what a time am I right <laughs> yeah I, I'll watch this film okay Um. I'll well hey I mean I have one to end on you have one to end on I think yeah, I think it's time to. I don't know if you had a surprise. <laughs> I'm just it's Why, been in the back something? of my mind this whole time. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess we could do. Yeah. That so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do. Uh, let's do. Let's do a surprise. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna text you something. Get your phone. I'm so it's there. <laughs> it's what I read my misconnections oh, on. Get ready. <laughs> so not. Long ago, mm-hmm. uh, on this podcast, yeah, we had a little discussion about movies and titles, and what would be a better title for a movie about Santa oh, and my God. his son? Yeah. And uh, you know, the general plot was that Santa was kicking out his son, right? His yes. son who lived with him at the North Pole. That was kind of all we had. Yes. So the internet shows. And my title, Santa and Son, out won your title, uh, which was I for, Santa Jr., was it? Yes. Yeah, you're coming off real like, I'm just going to warn you, you're coming off a lot like Subway Guy right now. <laughs> I understand. I understand. But wait, there's okay. more. We okay. had some casting choices that we had made separately. Yeah. But, um, well, in the spirit of the holiday... <laughs> I just thought it was best if we just kind of brought it all together. So I'm sending you what is a finished film poster. <laughs> oh, that's really beautiful. That's really well Santa done. and Son uh, starring J.K. Simmons as Santa yep. and Rupert Grint as Santa Santa's Jr. son. 
Santa Jr. or whatever we decided to name him. There's a couple other characters in here. What I'd like to do with you, Sarah, is yeah. I'd really like for us to just pitch this movie. I'd like to get nailed down the plot. Right oh my now. god. So uh, <laughs> why don't you you can let's describe the poster and we'll put it on our Instagram later so that you can view it as well. It should be there if you are listening. Um, but we'll describe it also right now. So, uh, yeah, why, well, tell us what we're looking at. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. So we got Santa looking um, very, oh boy, very authoritative and angry. Um, mm. Then below Santa is Santa's son, Rupert Grint. Uh, Rupert Grint is holding a supreme handbag with a bong poking out of it. <laughs> um, yes, he is. In the background is the ravioli woman, uh, Elena, in a Mrs. Claus outfit with her titties hiked up to her chin. Uh, and then Talon and I as mischievous elves at the bottom of the poster. Um, Mishka is also on the roof of the house in the background, dressed as a reindeer. Uh, and I would like to also note that this is rated R. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you see what it's rated R for? Uh, yeah, let me look it up. Language throughout, strong sexuality, nudity, and drug use. <laughs> Which all like... feel right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it feels pretty dead on. So... This is this is our film. I just let's kind of brainstorm here. So we already know the basics, right? We already know that Santa lives in the North Pole. We know yeah. that. And here we find that Santa has a son played by Rupert Grint, yes. who is kind of a I don't know, seems like sort of a semi hype beast stoner, kinda not really doing anything with Ne'er his do life. Well. Ne'er do well, yeah. Ne'er do well. Ne'er do well. Very good. Very good. Thank um you. Uh, what, from from your perspective, what do you think is the final conflict? What's the final straw on Santa's back that makes him say, as he's doing on the poster, pointing his finger away from Santa's home and saying, "Get out, Santa Jr." Um, I think the final uh, I think the final straw is when Santa Jr. says, "I'm going to go smoke some trees," uh, and what Santa doesn't realize, instead of just doing his normal stoner thing. Uh, Rupert Grant, Santa Jr., uh, goes and tries to smoke the big Christmas tree in the center of town. <laughs> oh, whoa. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. So he tries <laughs> to smoke yeah. the North Pole's own holiday tree. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that is... Uh, <laughs> that's going to be a, a nut -oh. I can't... I really want to see this scene play out. I really... <laughs> am ex I... I'm just visually thinking about the special effects component of <laughs> Rupert Grint. What is, is he trying to get the whole tree like to fit in a magic pipe or no, in I this bong he, of his? I think he employs the help of us, his two mischievous elf <gasps> friends. Uh, and he tells us to go. He like lays the tree down and he tries to fit his whole mouth around the base of it. And he waves at us <laughs> to go light the end. <laughs> oh, wow. He yeah. is not um, doing well. Yeah, which I will say is it is partially inspired by real life events. Um, if you're one of my personal <laughs> friends uh, on Instagram, you may have seen a couple of Fourth of Julys back when I lit the end of a firecracker box <laughs> and Talon pretended to smoke it, and it actually worked. <laughs> and I've been kind of horrified about what that meant for my body ever since. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's inspired by real life events. I love it. So we are. I like that we are kind of already like. Uh, buddy buddy with him like yeah. I thought maybe there was room for us to be like totally against him from the outset but mm. um, I like this idea better we already kind of have a connection maybe we kind of don't tell Santa that we like hanging out with his son because yeah. Santa's got some feelings about Santa Jr. And I but, think that uh, maybe like the emotional turn so right like like Rupert Grant Santa Jr. like has a great time like he gets like kicked out of the North Pole he, like goes to the human world He's like living large, like give it tipping twenty bucks at Subway. He's like doing it, and then I think that like the emotional turn of the movie is when Santa like Santa realizes that we like helped him, helped Santa mm. Junior, and threatens oh. to put us into a meat grinder. <laughs> Ooh, but but wait, because yes. I mean obviously that can't be allowed to happen. I know it's rated R, but it's still a Christmas <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He threatens. So, I said he threatens. He threatens us. And let me clear, just for right now, because on the poster, I've made us very small. Do you think that yes. means our voices are extra high? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And our, our, our body proportions otherwise, like, 
just standard what yes. we have right now, but I think our bot down. Yeah, okay. just like shrink raid, yeah. We're not gonna do like the ludicrous Fred Claus <laughs> thing where he just kinda had like a big head on a little no, body. No, no, no. And we're also not okay. gonna do the child labor thing that's the Santa Claus did. <laughs> right. And uh we won't be employing little people as as body doubles because that's, that's also fucked up. <laughs> kinda weird. Yeah. So Um I have a question for you. Okay. Um, so is Elena in this, is the raviola woman who's like a very sexy Mrs. Claus, is she, <laughs> is she Rupert Grint's mother or love interest or both? Is this uh, Oedipus? <laughs> I, I am of the impression yeah. just because of the age difference between Elena and J.K. Simmons. Okay. That has <laughs> never stopped Hollywood before, I'd just like to say. It hasn't. But I think this will be a direct commentary on it. I think this is mm-hmm. a, this is kind of a farce, right? This is kind of a bit okay. of a of a satire. So I think sure. we're going to comment on it, and I think Elena is actually maybe a possibly a step Mrs. What a Claus. A, oh, a, a sexy step stepmother. That's like wow. That's racy territory. I mean, it's a rated R racy stoner Christmas comedy. I don't, I don't know. That's true. That makes no, perfect sense true. to me. And then I also um, have another so question. Does Mishka actually oh, yeah. pull the sleigh? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think, I think so. I kind of gave him a red nose, which implies that he's Rudolph, also, right? So it's like I yes. think he, I think I think Mishka gets the full on play a reindeer in this movie, and and we'll employ some some help, you know, maybe the help of like <laughs> men in green screen suits that will hold sure. him in the air, so he looks like he's floating. Uh, well, Mishka might and, insist on doing you know, his own stunts. <laughs> Mishka might insist on doing his own stunts, but I think he could be persuaded to not do that with a treat. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be better. Uh, just, you know, for safety reasons. Uh, I just don't know that Mishka can pull a sleigh. I mean, <laughs> I haven't tried. I'm going to assume he can't, but I, I, who knows, you know? I guess stranger <laughs> things have happened. Um, this is really fantastic. I'm excited for our listeners to be able to see this. Uh, go check out our Instagram to, to see it. Uh, it'll be up on Instagram so you can look at this while we're talking about it so that you know it's not just, uh, cause we know this is an audio medium. <laughs> yeah. You have to look at it cause I spent entirely too much time on it. There's a crazy <laughs> Adobe, uh, Adobe bug right now that's <laughs> making it so you can't save and it's, it's. Great. This is, uh, it needs to be seen. It needs to be seen or I'll, it's just, beautiful. I'll just die. It's beautiful. Um, thank you. Claps for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I think, uh, I, you know, just to wrap it all up, big Christmas ending. Obviously, we don't get thrown into mid, the meat grinder. The meat grinder? The meat grinder. I think we help Santa Jr. better himself and become who he was always born to be. I think Santa sees this. And we save Christmas. I think that's how it all turns yep. out. And I think there is some weird relationship stuff to, to figure out between <laughs> yes. stepmom yes. and 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 Santa Jr. Yes. Uh, Unresolved least sexual of which tension. Is the incredible sexual tension. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So <laughs> well, that they... will be a B story that needs to be resolved. <laughs> but um, we'll figure it out. I might ask Elena for her opinion later, and we can update. Yeah. How about that? That'd be great. great. That was, thank so, you so much for this Christmas gift. That was a great holiday gift, Holland. Absolutely. We will do it every year. So get started on <laughs> brainstorming new titles. Um, I love it. I won't win again. I still owe you a wiener from that, but um, because we're living in a pandemic, I have not been able to give it to you yet. Oh, you will give me my pandemic wiener. I'll give you my wiener. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, Anywho. Great. Well... Uh, Let's go ahead and wrap this baby up like a Christmas present. We still have a couple treats for you at the end of this episode. But until then, thank you so much for listening to Craig's Essential Crisis. If you like what you hear, please consider leaving a rating and review in the Apple Podcast app. You can uh, also just, I don't know, if there's a place to review us and you can see it, eh, why not? Let the people know. But if you do it in the Apple Podcast app, it's really going to help us get found. Uh, especially pe- by people like Asher Thrace, who left us a five-star rating, as you do know. But I didn't read the rest of it, so I'm going to do that now, if you please. Uh, so here's the second part of Asher Thrace's five-star review. It 
goes on to say, as my reward, and here's where I actually made a tiny little error last time, since I actually wrote the lyrics out, and now Apple Podcast staff probably thinks I was maybe threatening you. But, you know, it's all good. I would like a dramatic reading of the first verse and chorus of Gucci Gang. Please, Patrick Stewart said no. All right, Tom. And I well, did Tom say. Tom did make I, a promise. Yep, I did make a promise. If you tell me to do something in the uh, five-star rating for this podcast, and it doesn't, like, hurt another person, I'll do Okay, it. you've never said um, that before. <laughs> you're right. You know what? Let's clarify. I meant I'll read it. I won't do anything you ask me to do. That seems to, that's going to require something more than a five star rating. We'll talk about what that is. Maybe one day you can make donations that will let that happen. But um, oh, no, man. I'm not going to do anything you write, but I will read it. Great. And just and to um, clarify, this is copyright Lil Pump. We are not trying to steal your Copyright music. <laughs> Lil Pump. Please don't sue us, Lil Pump. I'm sure you got lots of money and, and you know, friends who could beat us up. Please don't. We are a simple podcast. I'm a fan of your work, and this is a celebration of your work. Okay, I think we're clear. Huh. And you got I gotta say, you know, Gucci Gang, this isn't the song I uh, I listen to frequently. You are really <laughs> so, stalling. <laughs> I just, you know, if you've seen the lyrics, it just translated into writing. It's difficult to read. Hey, but just get to it. Less yap, more more Gucci. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Gucci Gang by Lil Pump, first verse and chorus. Ya ooh, burr burr, Gucci Gang, ooh. That's it right there. Neat. <laughs> yeah. Lil Pump, yeah. Gucci Gang, ooh. Ooh. Be a big head on the beat. Yeah, burr. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Gucci gang. Spend three racks on a new chain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. My bitch do love cocaine. Ooh. Ooh. I fuck a bitch. I forgot her name. Brr. Yeah. I can't buy a bitch no wedding ring. Ooh. Rather go and buy ball names. Brr. <laughs> Gucci gang, Gucci great. gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. <laughs> Gucci gang, 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 Gucci gang. And that will conclude this dramatic reading. Um, I could probably do it like Patrick Stewart, but we'll save it. <laughs> if you ask me to do it like Patrick Stewart, I'll do it. But that's not what you said. Uh, I did appreciate but, that you didn't know how to so say much. G Neils. Neils. We don't know how it's pronounced. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know that particular producer. <laughs> oh I mean, maybe maybe I do. Maybe I know their work. I don't know if I've heard their name out loud. <laughs> Gineals, G Neils, Neils. It's hard to say. G's and N's. Well, if you liked having power over what Talon and I say on the podcast, you might also like uh, to send us your own misconnection. Uh, you could do that on any of our social medias. We've got an Instagram. We've got a Twitter that we never check. And we've got an email address. Uh, you can email us at Craig Crypod, that's C-R-A-I-G-C-R-I-Pod at gmail.com uh, with any good misconnections you find or any that you like want to have us read in the hopes that they you find the person you're writing about so feel free to do that and then of course as talon mentioned do remember to rate subscribe and most importantly like tell your friends in real life uh about us yeah tell a tell a friend tell a friend you think this podcast is funny and they should listen to it uh we love hearing that you like it and we love uh lately there's been a couple people who have been recommending us and that's been really cool so yeah thank you keep doing that uh we also Want to thank the incredible Rose Sherman for writing our theme song and performing it every week live, live to tape just for you. <laughs> thank you so much, Rose Sherman. You can check her out at Hey Shermy on Instagram, and it's great. It's uh, I don't know. It's a good Instagram. You know. You know what I mean? It's a good gram. If you're looking for a good gram, that's it. There it is, Gucci Gang. 
Um, Gucci gang. Would you like to read your last one first or my last one first? This is a major present to you for making it all the way to 69 episodes and listening Ooh. to us on Christmas Eve. So, Tullin, what do you feel? Good question. I will read the one that you provided. Uh, I'll read it second. Why don't you read mine first? I just feel like Great. I bet you picked a good one. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dog park. Play at the dog park. Walk down by the river. You know. Grandpa. Grandpa looking for another grandpa for friendship. I'm Tom Bigelow. I'm Sarah Thompson. <laughs> and this has been the 69th episode of Craig's Essential Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. We did it. They said and it couldn't be it, done. We made it a long boy, too. It's an extra long 69. It's the longest Girl. 69 you've ever seen. The longest 69 of your life. <laughs> Girl. <laughs>